Hello, I'm Jesse McAnally. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And I'm Brianna Jones. And welcome to Me Schools with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew and Bree to like musical theater. How are you doing today, Andrew? Well, my son died. Oh, shit, again? No, this was for the first time. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, ran back into a church for a for a, tr- a tree seed. And just you mean got, a pine cone? Yeah, just got decimated, absolutely decimated, and I am very upset about it for the next 10 years. <laughs> what happens after 10 years, though? Uh, I imagine that I'm going to create like a wooden puppet version of him, and it will come to life. But is it going to be whimsical, like upbeat? You're going to sing a song, there'll be a talking like cat and a sexy fish? Or is it going to be like a Frankenstein monster monstrosity that you're going to create while drunk? I'm definitely doing it while drunk, because I am thinking about going into heavy drinking in the next like two or three years. Um, So I'm going to be probably like absolutely fucking smashed off my ass on like some wine or some something like some sort of something in a bottle you know mm-hmm. um this movie fucking rocks um <laughs> <laughs> this movie fucks and it slaps damn. um damn this week we are covering guillermo del toro's pinocchio cue the music brie Ciao, papa Mio papa, time has come to say farewell. For how long will I go? Is it far? No one knows, no one can tell. Pinocchio is a film written by Guillermo del Toro and Patrick McHale with music and lyrics by Alexandra Desplat, Robin Katz, and Guillermo del Toro based on The Adventures of Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Um, Pinocchio was announced by del Toro in 2008 and originally scheduled to be released in 2013 or 14. But the project went in development hell. In January of 2017, McHale was announced to be the co-writer of the script, but the production was suspended in November 2017 since no studios were willing to provide financing for it until netflix purchased it the next year it premiered at the bfi london film festival on october 15 2022 it was released in select cinemas on november 9th 2022 and began streaming on netflix on december 9th the film received critical acclaim and and earned three nominations at the 80th golden globe awards including best animated feature film The plot of this adaptation of Pinocchio is during the rise of fascism in Mussolini's Italy, a wooden boy brought magically to life struggles to live up to his father's expectations. This movie is fucking incredible. It's pretty good. Yeah, I was um, not sure what to expect, honestly, going in. Mm -hmm. Um, I've seen the Disney Pinocchio and I'm not like a crazy fan of it or anything, but it's all right. Um, But. Have you seen Damn Pinocchio's this, Christmas, though? I had seen Pinocchio's Christmas when I watched this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so basically, I went in with a low bar. No, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, but two stop-motion sure animated versions of Pinocchio in one day. In one day, yeah. And one of them was complete shit. And the other one is... I mean, is this the best Pinocchio? Easily. Sincerely, easily. Like, yeah, it's it's just really good. Uh, like, the emotional beats hit really hard. Um, it has things it wants to say and isn't, like, afraid to say them. Uh, it's got the fucking the villain from from tekken in it uh you, like it's 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 really just it's great you know um so what's your history with guillermo del toro i know that's a loaded question but i'm always curious and i think it will paint my impression of how you reacted to this film i don't think i've ever seen anything what maybe i have but i didn't know i watched his uh tv show uh, okay the netflix show that he just did but he didn't actually direct any of that he just kind of shows up at the beginning he's got a bit of a mousy face to him he does. He's a. He looks like the kindest man. He looks like he gives great hugs. Yeah, uh, I, and I did. I mean, that that show is an anthology horror, so yeah. there's good and bad. But I think overall, it was a positive impression of the of that show. But I don't think he like directed that or anything. So no. Um. So you've never seen Hellboy, Hellboy Two, Blade Two, Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, you know Labyrinth. what? No, I have seen the Hellboy movies. Okay. Um. You haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth? I have not. Pacific Rim? Nope. Shape of Water? No. Fuck me, man. You're missing I think out I've on... Seen, I think I've seen Hellboy, Hellboy 2, and you said Blade 2? 
Yes. I've seen Blade 2 as well. Kronos, Mimic, The Devil's Backbone. <laughs> Wait, Mimic? He did Mimic? Yes. I've seen Mimic. That's the, is... the 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 bugs in the... Yes. In the okay, yeah, I've seen that. I've, I've seen all the weird ones. <laughs> Guillermo del Toro is one of the best filmmakers we have currently working. Um, and it just goes to show, like, one of my least favorite films of his is the only one that won Best Picture and Best Director. What was that, Shape of Water? Yeah, Shape of Water. And I still really like Shape of Water. It's just, like, compared to his other stuff, not even touching it. Crimson Peak is one of my favorite movies, so is Pan's Labyrinth. Um, sincerely, this guy is doing next-level work, and the fact that he spent most of his life trying to make Pinocchio, like every other filmmaker, had me rolling my <laughs> eyes a little bit. It's like, oh, you want to make Pinocchio? Okay, yeah, great. We've talked about this in our Finding Neverland episode inexplicitly. Like, Bree, do you even remember how that came up where we just started talking about Pinocchio and pitched po Pinocchio and the Mafia? Um, no, I I don't. Okay, that's that's a wild as fuck because we did just kind of start talking about it. And I think we brought up this film, which I had very low expectations for. I love Guillermo del Toro, but like, what can you do with Pinocchio? And I should never lower my expectations for for Guillermo because he came in with a take and it's almost a critique of the original story. It, it, I wouldn't go that far, but I it's would. like a it's a critique on the ideas the story wants to tell you in because a way. Because I, I tweeted this out and I was actually amazed because I watched this twice. Um, I watched it first and I was like, OK, this is just what we're doing next week. Um, came to that conclusion right away. And yeah. then I w watched it again. And I was like, especially after watching Pinocchio's Christmas. <laughs> Um, for last week. <laughs> Wait, you mean watching a horrible version of Pinocchio made you, this one seem better? But it made me realize, because I've watched a lot of adaptations of Pinocchio. I've watched the um, the one from the 90s starring the kid that played Simba. I watched the um, Roberto Benigni one. I've watched the Disney one. I watched the new Disney one in preparation for this. Don't watch it. It's bad. It won't help you have a different opinion on this. Um, that was a waste <laughs> of my time and yours. Um, but the original story of Pinocchio is a fable about how misbehaving is bad and you should always do what you're told or else you're going to be a very naughty little boy and the i mean minute... that is a lot of fairy tale stuff though and the minute you start taking like listening to your parents and listening to authority figures you will be better off and this one strictly says no don't agree with your authority figures because that leads to fascism <laughs> I think I don't know if they're saying it leads to fascism necessarily, but I think they're trying to point out that sometimes the types of people that want that sort of authority over you are exactly the type of people that you shouldn't be listening to, you know? So like, yeah, yeah sometimes the person who wants authority over you is fucking Mussolini, you know, and like you shouldn't listen to him. <laughs> Yeah, and <laughs> in these days and age, when fascism is somehow on the rise again, um, it American really hit home for me. educational system, uh, American culture in general, there's a lot of bad shit going on, and it all leads to the same crap. Right, so. and it took some of the ideas from the original Colodi story, um, added a lot of Guillermo del Toroisms, specifically the implementation of the Blue Fairy, and actually showing Pinocchio has a weird immortality clause in his existence. Yeah, is that that is directly from the original? No, story? no, no. In the original story, he just couldn't die, and the afterlife okay. is created, is a strictly Guillermo del Toro creation. And you can tell by the visual style. Yeah, okay. Um, And I actually really liked the subplot about the afterlife and what life means and whether immortal life is a blessing or a curse and how Pinocchio I, becomes a real boy. All these things are so fucking good. There's a certain element that i don't love but i don't i don't think it ruins the movie or anything but like i'm not sure i agree that the the afterlife <laughs> section necessarily needed to exist as it does um it, it does sort of raise some questions like i don't know we're gonna get into spoilers obviously uh yeah so. watch this movie i think we're both fairly positive on it and i really don't want to spoil Very, it so if yeah. you have not go just it watch yet. it it's on netflix you have netflix we know you have netflix everyone not, has fucking netflix torrents exist <laughs> yes and steal it that's even better if you don't have netflix fucking steal it do yes. it. yes um so why don't you just tell us the plot of this version of pinocchio if you could andrew 
Sure, I'll do my best. Um, uh, Geppetto and his son Carlo, mm -hmm. uh, named after Carlo Collodi, the original author of Pinocchio. Yep. Yeah, um, they are well. He's a he's like a sculptor or something like that. Yeah, he's like a, a toy maker or some woodworker. Kind. Um, he's making something for the church. He's making a big uh, uh, crucifix, I think. Um, and. Uh, it's during the start or in in the middle of World War One or something like that. Yes. Um, and so he is at the church putting stuff up and some planes fly overhead. They release their bombs, I guess, and, and they imply that it's it's for strictly no reason. Yeah, uh, just, just had to release their to bombs. Lighten. Yeah, so they just bomb like a random tiny town, and and uh, his son dies in it. Um, mm -hmm. In front but of his him. son found. Yep, and his but his son had found like a a pine cone in a very good condition or something, and he no, wanted no, to no. plant it. He when they cut down a tree, they have to replenish the earth to give back, or else they're stealing. And so he found okay. the perfect pine cone that he wanted to bury to replenish yeah. the tree they cut down for the crucifix. Yes, so he plants that, and then plants plants that where his grave is because i guess they couldn't they probably couldn't salvage the body to even bury it seemed like yes uh, <laughs> so the tree grows showing how much time has passed the tree fully grows uh geppetto is a, a horrific like drunk like it's just sad to watch uh mm -hmm. he cuts down the tree and in makes anger uh, and anger drunken anger drunken rage he's been mad at at god for not answering his prayer and bringing his son back somehow uh, and so he creates pinocchio essentially the and blue it's, fairy it's not in a pretty like way it's like a frankenstein movie there's lightning it's very disgusting and pinocchio is unfinished like he really focused on one side of the head and the other side he just leaves raw he is a mishmash creation and ugly yeah, he and he, he literally never does get finished either. No. Uh, and so the blue fairy comes and brings Pinocchio to life. And of course, I mean, Geppetto is horrified by this because it is a living puppet and you should be horrified by that. I feel like in the Disney movie, they aren't exactly, uh, they don't like showing that aspect of it that much. I don't know. <laughs> it's pleasant and magical. Yeah. Uh, but Geppetto like, eventually kind of likes, kind of likes the Pinocchio because, he, you know. He, He's kind of tricked into liking him, but he very easily screams, you're not my son, go away. And just because he's the only human that seems to be kind of on his side, he starts unwittingly parenting him. Yeah. Um, Pinocchio gets uh, forced to go to school by the uh, moral officer of the, the town yes uh I, I guess technically speaking they're not a nazi because they are they're an Italian fascist, fascist government officials in but, uh, they are, or italy they are essentially nazis you know yes. it's, it's kind of the same shit <laughs> Uh, so if we shorthand it as Nazis, it's not because we are historically illiterate. It is because we are shorthanding as Nazis. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, um, so he's about to go to school, but he gets tricked by the uh, the the guy from Tekken uh, into going to the circus instead. <laughs> Christoph Waltz as Count Volpe. Um, Count Volpe. A mix between the fox and like the cat from the original Pinocchio story. Cause... Bit of trivia, because I had to look it up, and and by I had to look it up, I mean my girlfriend looked it up for me. <laughs> um, but apparently, uh, uh, Guillermo del Toro, when he plays Tekken, he always plays as uh, as that character with the wing hair, like the winged out <laughs> hair, and that actually is where the hair came from. It is that from is Tekken. Fucking hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so that that's just funny. I forget what that character's name is. It's like Heihashi Mishima or something like that. Uh, but tell Becca I said thank you for that fun fact. That is wonderful. <laughs> um, but uh, holy shit, where was I? Uh, he's kidnapped so by Pinocchio... the kid from <laughs> Tekken. <laughs> yeah, he's kidnapped by the guy from Tekken, uh, and he's brought to the circus and he performs. Uh, Geppetto and that guy fight over Pinocchio and accidentally get him killed, and he goes to the afterlife. And this is where we find out that he's immortal. Um, However, there is a caveat. Anytime he dies, there's a little bit more sand in his hourglass before he can return. So it takes a little bit extra time every time he dies to return to his body. Yeah. So he, he always has to wait before coming back. Mm -hmm. um, and Ron Perlman, as the Podesta, sees that Pinocchio comes back to life and is like a perfect fascist soldier that cannot die. Yes, it just it will win them the war because yeah. And the the circus man, um, the Count Volpe, sees like, hey, he contractually signed on with me, so he belongs to me, uh, or else you got to pay me a million, like whatever Italian money he called it. Um, and in this moment, 
Geppetto calls Pinocchio a burden because either you have to go to war, which Geppetto hates war because obviously his son was killed yeah, because duh. of it, um, or he has to pay so much money to this um, this circus dealer. And Pinocchio, in sadness and in an attempt to try to earn money for Geppetto, decides to go into the circus with Christoph Waltz's character to give money back to Geppetto. Um, of course, this circus character is not giving him that money. Yeah, duh. <laughs> I mean, he's literally taking advantage of a uh, Minor. puppet that was born like yesterday, yes. actually. Um, but Geppetto feels bad and chases after him and ends up in the whale, or it's more of a monster, actually, like a sea yes. monster. But um, And eventually, uh, Pinocchio... Uh, well, actually, no, this is worth mentioning. Pinocchio performs for Mussolini, but <laughs> mocks him uh, and gets yeah, killed for Yeah, not because of it. any political belief, but just because he was angry that his dad wasn't getting the money. Yeah. Uh, though it is funny to mock Mussolini, and Mussolini is played by Tom Kenny in this. Yes, he is, uh, and that is incredible. <laughs> Did you read who plays the monkey, um, Count Volpe's monkey, Spacitura? Uh, who was it? I don't actually have that one on hand. That is Kate Blanchett playing a monkey with no spoken lines of dialogue except for grunts and... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is wonderful. <laughs> That is a very Guillermo del Toro move. Um, but he mocks Mussolini, gets killed, and then, you know, the afterlife thing, he comes back again. And uh, he's in a child recruitment military camp for the fascist army yeah. of Italy. Yes. Uh, Which is the equivalent this... of Pleasure Island in the, like, Pinocchio narrative, <laughs> strangely. Yeah, but it's, like, kind of the opposite in a way. Pleasure Island is, like, the kids get to do whatever they want, whereas here it's more of the kids have to do everything they're told. <laughs> yes and so it's, it's about kind the of horrors the of obedience as opposed to the horrors of disobedience yeah it's like it, you are right in, in that this is kind of like an inverse pinocchio tale uh. mm -hmm. um and he m makes friends with a character called candlewick which is the equivalent to the pinocchio colodi character of lampwick who turns into the donkey at pleasure island and is like this moral like moralist piece of shit throughout that story and here he is like the perfect fascist kid who's just yeah. trying to get his father's love but he he actually ends up uh this this version actually ends up getting to uh kind of win in a way kind of though i i guess um watching your father die directly in front of you even if he's kind of abusive and everything probably will be a little bit traumatic mm -hmm. but <laughs> and his father oh. telling you to murder your best friend Pinocchio definitely also traumatic um did you know geez, who you played fucking... Candlewick no who is it Finn Wolfhard from uh It and Stranger Things and I thought he did a really good job especially with the British accent I didn't even notice honestly you just you just gotta watch this fucking shit like, we're explaining the whole mm -hmm. thing but like just go watch fucking Pinocchio the My only God. problem is up to this point like it's interesting and from this point forward, it gets kind of Pinocchio, like, oh, we got to hit the Pinocchio beats. Yeah, but it's still interesting. The most interesting thing they do is at the end. Um, Pinocchio goes back, gets killed by in the sea monster, basically, sequence. And he knows that his father is drowning. And he says, send me back now. And the death creature is like, if I send you back now, you will literally only have one life left. You will no longer be immortal. You will die and he's like that's fine i want to save my dad and that is an arc a very concrete arc for pinocchio in which case he becomes a real boy by sacrificing his life and because of deus ex machina shit we set up earlier he is brought back to life by the crickets one wish um not worth mentioning and then he outlives every one of his friends he outlives geppetto he outlives jiminy cricket or whatever sebastian c cricket or whatever it's called um, it's Jiminy Cricket. We, we know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> and he walks the earth and no one is sure if he ever died. And that is, yeah. he never becomes a real boy. He never becomes flesh and blood. And I'm like, that is a more powerful ending than anyone ever could do. And it makes me think about the Disney ending and how badly they fucked that one up. How does Disney end it? Does he just end up, he just turns into an actual child, right? No, hold on. Let me see if I can find the clip um, because this is stupid. I guess I should have watched uh, the Disney no, one to nope. prepare as well, but... Nope, you shouldn't have. You are living your best life. Have you guys heard of Pinocchio 3000? No. What the fuck is this? <laughs> Does he join the mafia? <laughs> oh, he, looks like, he looks like a robot. Hold on. I'm gonna Show me it. this first before we look at this ending. All right, hold on. This is just AI. <laughs> oh, why am I not... Oh, the... oh God. 
That is horrific. I hate this. I hate. Oh wait, wait, wait. Is this a? Uh, oh, yep. Animated movie from two thousand and four. Yep. Checks out. Okay. Is there? A... <laughs> I want to see if there's a trailer. Oh, I went to the year three thousand. Do you think they play that song? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I don't think they can afford the Jonas Brothers at the height of their Jonas Brotheriness. Let me guess. There's like a million fucking gigantic names in this though. Yeah, like Nicholas Cage. Can you hear this? I cannot. No. But I'm in. Enjoying what I'm seeing. In the not so distant future. A, a classic, classic tale. tale. This is just AI. Yeah, this is just AI. It's just Astro Boy meets AI. Which that's just two versions of Pinocchio meeting it each is. other. It is. It 100% is. Have you watched Astro Boy? I haven't watched either of those. I just know that they're both Pinocchio. Yeah. Um, <laughs> AI is good. Like, AI has something to say in the same way that this does. Well, that's it's not a... what Nostalgia Critic said. Nostal Did you watch a Nostalgia Critic review? <laughs> no. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> So this is what they do for this. Oh, you're talking about this one. Yes. Too many cricket looks like a superhero because it looks like he's wearing like a face mask. It does. <laughs> They basically it, sidestepped by like some say he became a real boy. I don't know. Just not like fucking, I was there or anything. They, they could have even done a cool effect where like he turns into an actual like child actor. That would have yeah. been interesting. But like um, that would like just do like it's the Disney version. Just turn him into a real boy. Like come on. <laughs> that movie is nigh unwatchable. I would call it pitiful. I thought you were talking about the animated one, like the one. The that's animated like not one. Bad. He just the, the the girl just shows up and gives, smashes a wand on his face and he's a boy now yeah which honestly that's a perfectly fine way to end pinocchio i think i i don't care if you're not but gonna it's... end with him walking the earth as the only living soul that can't die that would be a fine ending yeah i mean no one's gonna top this version i don't think so <laughs> i don't think at least not within the next two decades i'm si i mean maybe but father father <laughs> <laughs> um that one that doesn't even cover the pinocchio story in it it's about him joining the circus with the talking horse father <laughs> on that note how about we compare our opinion to those of the crazy folks on letterbox.com it's time for previews it's time for previews it's time for previews all right brie what do we got today uh who wants to go first andrew andrew sure I'll go first. I have the whole world dussy. Oh, that's it? That's it. Well, there's a crying face, a wet emoji, and a tongue sticking out. Okay, so they have the whole world dussy. Um, five. That's a one. <laughs> Not fair. Doesn't make sense. God isn't real. Pinocchio rules. All right, Jess, I hate my son. Due to my extensive <laughs> lore catalog, I'm sure you know why. Pinocchio reminds me of his whimsical ass. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Someone's airing their dirty laundry up on their letterbox accounts, and that sounds like a one star. That is a one star. Mr. DeWolf, what do you, what we got next? Russia released this one week before the invasion of Ukraine. What? Russia released this... this one week before the invasion of Ukraine. I think this is referring to the <laughs> to the um Polly Shore one, the but father one. Oh, but father. But father, <laughs> I wanna go I own. Okay. Um fucking one star. That was a five star. What the fuck? <laughs> damn son i'm just not i'm not in it right now you're not feeling the letterbox jess this one says jiminy got a boner that he did um that is referring to the 2022 one because i know the exact moment they're talking about and that is a one star um that was a five star fuck <laughs> I was so confident. Like, why Why would they like that? Why would they like him getting a boner? Okay, Jess, or Andrew, are you ready? Father, when can I leave on my own? I got the whole world to see. I got the whole world to see. I got the whole world to see. <laughs> but father. <laughs> uh, on my own. I hate when he says that. On my own. Five stars five stars that's a five star yes <laughs> hot take this is probably going to be in my top three pinocchio <laughs> movies of 2022 that sounds like a five that is a one fuck this that's movie... why i have trust issues <laughs> this movie gave martin scorsese morning wood yeah and he's he's got he's hard to do that for so 
I don't We're know. Go with five five stars. That's a five star. You know the wildest thing about Martin Scorsese? If we can take a pause here, it's Scorsese, but Scorsese. No, it isn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> like he has a Gen Z daughter, and for my whole like existence on here, I assumed that was because he married someone like much younger than him. No, he married an age appropriate woman that had a baby at fifty two. <laughs> Holy shit. That's impressive. I, I don't know why that fucks with me a lot, but it does. Like, I, I love Scorsese. Like, I love 75% of his movies. Um, But man, that's weird. Yeah. Either way, what's All my right. next thing? Last one, Jess. All right. Am I winning? No. Damn. I'm not but losing, I have a tie. Though. I have a tiebreaker if you, if you even it up. Okay. The first song that Pinocchio sings when he comes to life is the reason why I choose not to have children. That's obviously a one. That's a one. Okay, you tied it. Suck it, Andrew. Okay, Damn. So, so, do you guys, how do you want to do the tiebreaker? Whoever screams at first. <laughs> okay. Guillermo del Toro cannot get here fast enough. That is a one. Five star. That is a one. Jess, you won. I just guessed whatever Jess didn't say, so <laughs> maybe I would get it. I assume that was on an older version of Pinocchio, either the Poly Shore or the other one, hoping that this is better. And obviously it was, because Guillermo del Toro might be one of the best working directors we have currently. The only film of his that I haven't absolutely really loved is Blade 2 and Nightmare Alley. Blade 2 is like, okay, though. No, it's the best Blade movie, but it's still a Blade movie. <laughs> Look, the Blade movies are pretty fun. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be straight with you. I guess I liked watching them. They're fine. They are fine movies. Um, I got they're, they're on the same ish tier as Hellboy. That's my thought. Do you think after this you're going to actually give a good watch to the? other Guillermo del Toro movies. Maybe one day. Because this isn't even my favorite Guillermo del Toro movie. Which one's your favorite? Uh, Hellboy 2? <laughs> I do like Hellboy 2 quite a bit. I've seen but... that one already. Hellboy 2 is better than Hellboy 1. I completely agree with you. Um, Crimson Peak is obviously my favorite, but I think his best one is Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, I kind of figured that that was his best one. I'm Everyone su- talks about that I'm one. I'm surprised you haven't seen that one. Just haven't seen it. I don't know. Shape of Water is also very good. Despite it not being like one of my favorites and probably the lowest on my list, it is very, very good. Um, I don't love Pacific Rim just because I'm not a big fan of um, um, kaiju films. I'm sure you kind of have to be to really attach to that. I've never actually, like, watched a real one. I've seen, like, the Americanized Godzilla movies, but... You've never seen the original Godzilla? What, you mean the 98 one with, uh... <laughs> Matthew Broderick? That's a lot of fish. Um, <laughs> That's a lot of fish. <laughs> no, I've not. I, I've seen that one, but I'm talking about the original, like, 1940s one about, you know, the nuclear war. Yeah, no, I've not seen it. You should. It's a good movie. I thought you said you didn't like kaiju movies. I don't, but you should watch the first Godzilla. You know, the best kaiju movie, the original kaiju movie. The one okay. that's a metaphor for nuclear war. Um, also, I know we're a little out of order, but fuck you. Um, Tyler, time for wild facts. Rawr. <laughs> Do you know anything about Alexandre Desplat, who is the composer of this film? No. He is literally one of my favorite composers currently working. Um, he did the score to the Little the Little Women film that came out a few years ago, um, as well as like a lot of the Harry Potter films, Case of Benjamin Button, um, The Imitation Game, which might have like one of the most iconic scores for a shitty movie I've ever heard. Um, but this was like the first time he wrote music that would be turned into a song which is why I think a lot of these songs really work for me. Um, And he described writing these original songs as like a Lego game. There's a big castle to build because there's a history of incredible songwriters before us for cinema and animation, from the Sherman Brothers, Richard Rogers, to so many great songwriters. So you're trying to have a conversation with the past, and at the same time you try to play with this Lego castle and you have in front of you, and you build the most beautiful object you can. And I feel like that is basically the effective way he wrote these songs. Also, in his compositions, he had all the instruments for the recording sessions be made of wood because he feel, felt like that would be closer to Pinocchio. It's That's something where it's like, is that noticeable? But it might actually be like a subconsciously noticeable thing i think so too just because woodwinds i like a woodwind band yeah um of course i mentioned before geppetto's deceased son is named carlo uh an homage to carlo collodi the original author of the pinocchio stories it's, uh. it's a it's kind of funny in a way um that uh, pinocchio is 
by the end told that he doesn't have to be like Carlo. Exactly. Um, and a lot of the a lot of the movie is about how the original story doesn't necessarily have the most the best moral uh, to it. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorite things about this film, and I know this is actually a pretty iffy issue as far as stop motion animation is concerned. Um, a lot of basically every piece of this was 3D printed. So it's a CGI model that they 3D print. Is it really stop motion animated if it comes from a 3D model to begin with? Hmm, it's kind of hard to say, I guess. I agree. Like, that's a confusing element. Like, Nightmare Before Christmas, I think one of the most charming things about that is its imperfections, is the, like, fingerprints on the heads and things that make it look a little janky. Where this, I wouldn't call it perfect, but it's pretty close. And have you ever print, 3D printed anything, Andrew? I have not. I have, and it's pretty remarkable how they take an FBX image or a Blender image and create it. And I don't know, it it, it fe- like it looks different than say uh, even a Monkey Bone or James the Giant Peach. Or even Wendell and Wild. Like, I know they didn't 3D print everything. I think they kind of molded those things. What do you think about that in comparison to this? Because I know you watched that. Uh, Animation-wise? I'm talking model-wise, not animation-wise. Model-wise. Okay. I think, yeah, I mean, the Wendell and Wild models are more expressive, I think. In a like a cartoon imperfect. kind of way. A little more yeah. imperfect. Yeah. They're more like, uh, maybe expressive is wrong, because, I mean, these models are expressive, but they're more, like, wide-eyed and, like, they can make big mouths and stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. No, that's fair. Um, and that's basically all of our wild facts. I just wanted to make sure I got them out. All right. All right. How about we go into a mid show and then we talk about these songs and wrap this on up? Sounds good. Today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors at Patreon. Patreon's where you can go if you want to give us some money. We got some extra content on there for you. You can request episodes at certain tiers. You could even appear on the show if you want to spend the most money. Um, You know, a lot of good stuff. You also join uh, our big old list that I'm going to read off right now. Our current patrons are Melissa Goldman, uh, Danielle Rennix, Jess the Stampede, Ewan Cassidy, Monica Thoreau, Mina Maniri, Brent Black, Daniel Stacey Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Mary Lou Choquette, Jean Vanals, Russ Walker, Musical Hell, Kyle Summers, Janae C, Scoot in the Technicolor Dreamcoat, Liz Lim, Allison Stoller, Nothing is Certain Except Beth and Taxes, Thesbian, Ren Cullen, Rafael Martinez Salaz, Jessica T, Mitchell Young, Chai Teacup, Katie McDonough, Chris Marcote, Mimu, Kiji Marie Anastasio, Leela, RJ Nariga, Charlie B. Bjorn Hermans, Erica S., Toriana Frazier, Sammy the Most Lopez, Liana Morton, Kaylee Blazier, Birdman69, Sim- Cinemageddon Reviews, Villainous Miss, Sophina Ali, The Omega Geek, Paige Pearson, Maddie Wargle, Eliza Erdman, Anna Luskatova, Cheska Vare, Sarah Den Blakier, uh, Evan Ball, Zachary Torres, Gathering Forth Before Venturing Party, and Rora Marasso. These folks give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese and pay our wonderful editors. Um, and if you'd like to support us and get tons of fun perks, as Andrew brought up earlier, and a lot of other things, come join us over at Patreon. And also, we're planning to revise our entire Patreon scheme in 2023 with a brand new like perks and brand new things. Um, and those who join in 2022 will be getting uh, a, a better view of these perks and be able to decide early on. So if you'd like to get on, get in early on that, come join us over at Patreon right now. How about we get back to the show? Oh, yeah. The songs in here um, are iffy because they almost make you question whether this is a musical. Uh, I think there's enough where you could justify it. But what do you think? There is not many songs, but I think what it really is, is that this is a longer movie. And there's there's enough songs here that if this was like an hour and a half, maybe you'd feel like it was definitely a musical. Yes. But because it's like two hours and there's still only only this many songs, it's like, mm, is it a musical, though? Like, they kind of front load them, too. <laughs> yeah, they do. When you get towards the second half, it's like where the songs go. The fascism and, but, comes in and kills the music. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he has a song that is like a, a fascist sort of number that he performs on stage. Um, but. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they never like sing any songs or anything like that while they're at like the camp. I don't think there's much for, I mean, there's like a song inside the whale, the, well, the monster, sea monster, sort of, but 
Mm-hmm. Not like a real song, you know? Well, let's talk about the first one. Um, My Son, which um Geppetto sings to Carlo, um, which apparently was written by uh Geppetto's wife and Carlo's mother. This song is fucking heart-wrenching because they tell you right away, Carlo's gonna die, so let's make you fall in love with him really quick. You are my favorite, favorite thing. Better than sunset, better than spring. You bring me joy. You make me sing in the morning and the evening too. You are everything to me and I love you. Yeah, they at least give you that right away they don't um they don't try to shock you with it which would have been worse i think but yeah this is a sad one um like it's i mean it's sad contextually i feel like the song itself isn't like performed in a way that feels sad but you know what i mean no i completely understand um contextually and also david bradley i don't know if you know that actor very well um he was filch in the harry potter movies he's stepped in to play the first doctor in a lot of doctor who revivals um he is so good at this movie he is probably the only reason why this film works as geppetto uh, as geppetto yes. yeah that's what i figured um and here geppetto, it breaks your heart yeah geppetto i I sort of wanted Geppetto to be in the movie more. Um, that's like my one gripe, especially with like the middle part of the of the movie, is it feels like Geppetto just kind of goes away. But I, that happens in Pinocchio, though, is the thing. That's just the, a Pinocchio thing that happens. Well, um, obviously, um, it sounds like to me you're setting up that on Patreon we should be covering Geppetto starring Drew Carey, a musical about Geppetto's side of the story. He's like, he just is like, where's Pinocchio? You're what's he you doing? Th- that you think you're. <laughs> exaggerating but it's like him and julia louis dreyfus he's like you gave me a faulty son and he has to learn the importance of children and how it's not always the easiest thing in the world <laughs> we we're definitely doing that on patreon we have to do that now. okay okay um yeah but my son very good song yeah and like it's not like perfect singing like i know we talked in our lay Miz episode about like hugh jackman and Russell Crowe. Like, this isn't vocally, like, the most well-trained singing, but it works emotionally for the moment. I think it's different when it's, like, a folky-type song as well, where you're not Mm -hmm. expecting the singing to be uh, perfect, whereas when you're doing... When you're literally performing a Broadway musical for a movie, um, maybe you shouldn't fucking have a raspy-ass voice (laughs) where you haven't drank water in several days, Hugh. (laughs) (laughs) Um, There's that side of it, and also you can write for the the voice that you have in the way that I'm sure Alexandra Desplat um, did for this one where he's like I know what David Bradley's voice sounds like I know how it should what it's fault like it's the same thing we said about Spirited when you're writing for Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell you know it's highs and it's lows you know it's Tessitura and all that yeah I really like the song. It really set up the world and set up that this is a proper singing musical. However, it is diegetic. And the next song, it is debatable whether it is diegetic or non-diegetic. And that is Everything is New to Me, Pinocchio's song of I'm Alive. All the things my eyes can see. Everything is new to me. o'clock yeah this one i don't think is diegetic it's kind of not yes right he's just asking questions um, but it's a song and he likes to smash things well it's only because geppetto failed to explain to him that hammers smashing things it's not just for anything true but he does kind of just smash everything even before the hammer but it's um this one is, I don't think it's as good as my son. I don't think it's like bad, but I don't really love the repeating lyrics. Like the, uh, like, what, what is, is this? this? What, what is, is this? this? Yeah. Um, the thing about this and specifically, like, it's shot like a horror number. And I'm playing some of it right now where Geppetto is horrified at what he's seeing at the moment. It is, uh, t- it is a scary thing. And he's well, yeah, like, this is like an unfinished puppet, like walking around. 
It's like, what? Like, it's unpleasant. It's un... Like, and he's chucking knives at him. Yeah, he, like, try. He not tries to, but seems like he tries to kill Geppetto, like, four or five times just in this in this one number. Especially because <laughs> Geppetto's hungover. He wakes up from a very drunken stupor of creating a Frankenstein monster to it being alive. <laughs> Oops. Oops. I think the scene works because of the juxtaposition between the very upbeat song number and the horrific realization of Geppetto. I suppose, yeah. Um, um, then we have, um, like, Christoph Waltz has a song, but I don't really want to talk about that. The biggest emotional song, and the one that I know is going to go up for all the Oscars, um, is Ciao Papa. If I am gone for a long, long time, I'll pack away. yes and this one he is it's it's back to being uh diegetic i guess because he's performing it on stage yes um, uh, <laughs> this song breaks my heart but, but emotionally speaking it's it's while he is performing it on stage this song he actually means uh yeah so what's the context for the song andrew uh he left geppetto so he could go perform in the uh traveling circus and, and earn money. send the money back yeah this one is is uh very good yes it's also kind of like the last song as well though not the last song because you also have like mussolini takes poops and all that that's true but this is like a real song yes it is the proper like song song and these lyrics were by guillermo del toro himself he wrote this himself and you can kind of tell is there any other song really worth talking about? There's one, and that is the bit, most Broadway style song, um, and that is the 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 cricket the song, cricket or? song because he keeps trying to sing it throughout he, the movie. <laughs> By and at the end, he finally gets to for the credits. Yes, and it's Ewan McGregor, <laughs> and I feel like Ewan McGregor gets a bad rap. Maybe one day in 2023, we'll cover the move up Moulin Rouge movie on this show. But he's very good, and it's fun, and I like the running joke that he isn't able to sing. It, well, it's not that he's not able to sing. It's that no one will allow him to or yes. the situation won't allow him to. And he has to die <laughs> and go to hell to be able to sing. Our life has a funny way of going round and round. On a ride it goes one day side to side, one day upside down, down, down. You can make it right. Well worth a good fight. And if some days have downs and lows, open your arms to better tomorrows. You, you almost feel a little bad for the for the cricket in this because he's just he's nothing a really goes tool. his way. Nothing goes his way. Uh, he, he's just he is a, a genuinely good person. It's he even, I mean, he uses his only wish to bring somebody else back to life when really, I mean, Pinocchio is basically just his house. <laughs> you're right when you're right you're right would you give your life for your house andrew if my house came to life i would definitely not use my only wish to bring it back to life when it died i mean now that i if i had seen what the afterlife was like like if i'm pinocchio i wouldn't be that scared of death like oh i get to hang out with all you fucking crickets and rabbits and weird death creatures do you though I'm pr it seems like it's implied that everyone else is sitting in all those caskets in the back. Why does the, the fucking cricket get to play cards with the rabbits? Because he's not a person. He's a cricket. So only rabbits and crickets get to play cards. True. Well, think about that when you're going to sleep at night and maybe think twice about masturbating. On that note, what is our overall thoughts on Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio and our cheese rating? Andrew, why don't you start? Uh, Very good. Yes. I mean, I, I don't know how many times we can just say it, but like, just go for fucking watch this shit i mean it's new it's on the the flicks you just check it out i mean come on <laughs> he said it uh yeah um let's see as far as a uh you gotta like there's so many good italian cheeses to pick you know like there's just there's a huge fucking list we're gonna pick one that sounds uh 
fancy and fun. Um, let's see. Uh, we're gonna give it a giganti cheese. It sounds it sounds fun. It sounds new. And it's it's a big it's a big movie. You should watch it. That's all I can say. Who it cares? took over ten years to make. Technically, yes. remember he started working on this in two thousand eight. It took ten years to make. <laughs> Um, Brie, what do you think of our discussion? And please tell us if you're going to watch the Pinocchio movie. Um, your discussion was great. I am definitely going to be watching the Pinocchio movie. This looks, the art style is beautiful. Yes. Everything about it looks great. Um, so I think for a cheese rating, I'm going to give it mozzarella cheese stick. Mozzarella is good on its own, but mm-hmm. then when you fry it, it's even better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hell yeah. And the Guillermo del Toro touch is the fried breading on the side. Yes. Um, that's a great cheese rating. Um, I am giving this ricotta salata wedge cheese, um, from Pinocchio's Pantry, which is an authentic Italian foodery online. Um, so yeah, go buy that cheese. I love this film. I, I'm a big fan of Guillermo del Toro. Um, sincerely, um, I wish that we could have an opportunity to cover more of his work on this show, but sadly he doesn't do musicals all that often. This is his first. So I was very excited for the opportunity and that it was good. I was really scared this wouldn't be good. Um, if we refer back to our Finding Neverland episode, I'm like, why is everyone doing fucking Pinocchio movies? I'm sick of auteurs thinking that's the most inspiring thing they could do when really not so much. I don't think there will ever be a better adaptation of the story. I just I don't I don't think Pinocchio is that good of a story. You know, like, I don't think there's that much potential really in there. Uh, <laughs> when no. I was little they would always put Pinocchio on and I thought it was very boring. <laughs> well, right? Yeah. It's like, it really isn't like that great of a story. And I feel like what was done here is probably the most you could ever do with it. A hundred percent. Cause they like said, what you did was nice. Um, we have our own opinion and we're going to use this narrative to our advantage. Yeah. Cause, and, and like, really like we got to just call it a fucking day on fucking Pinocchio. <laughs> like, Come on. There's so many better fucking things we could be making than more fucking Pinocchio movies. Um, I agree. However, um, I do like the two Pinocchio movies. I like AI a lot. I feel like the nostalgia critic, whatever his opinion on it was wrong. Um, AI is a good fucking movie and Spielberg is a quality director that had a point of view on. Do you know everyone's complaining about that movie? Do you know the premise uh, of that movie, Andrew? Can I have my AI rant here? It's a uh, Pinocchio. Kind of. So there's this executive that wants to create a robot that can learn how to love. Like they make, so he makes this child that knows how to love. Um, (laughs) A mother programs it because her son's in a coma. The son comes out of a coma and she abandons the child in the woods. And the child is just trying to get back to his mother and goes through all these hijinks and all this stuff. Um, Horrible, horrible events to find out that he is not special he is not important he is a mass produced product and then goes to the bottom of the ocean and sits there for a million years until these alien creatures um come out and is like all right you work or alien robot creatures because they are all spawned from that creation and decide since you are basically our god um, you get one wish and he wishes there is mom back and they're like, yeah, but at the end of it, she has to die and you do too. And he said, it's worth it. <laughs> so he <laughs> dies next to his mother in it, her arms and people are like, that's too happy an ending. Of course they had to Spielberg up the ending. And I'm like, that's a fucking dark, a nihilistic ending. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you people are talking about. He sits at the bottom of the ocean for thousands of years and then dies dies next to his mommy after having one day with her because he thought one day was worth it. <clears throat> that movie's fucking weird as shit, flawed as hell. I still love it. She abandoned you in the woods. Yep. <laughs> I'm... He doesn't have logic because he was programmed to love her and that was his only thing. So he has no okay. other focus in the world except to love his mother. Um. On that yeah. note, you know who else loves their mommy? <laughs> Me. <laughs> And our wonderful patrons, thank you guys for listening. <laughs> Please follow us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, at Musicals for Cheese, Twitter, oh, Mus- Cheesy Musicals. We're on Patreon, Musicals for Cheese, Instagram, Musicals for Cheese. We're on YouTube at Musicals for Cheese. We have a Patreon only podcast called Patreon with Cheese. Email us at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our keep of the cheese is Juliet Antonio. This show is produced by the incredible, the wonderful Rihanna Jones. Um, our theme songs were created by Robin Nash of IOU Music UK. Thank you to the Broadway Podcast Network for having us on the platform. 
platform for not kicking us off for shitting on Pinocchio so much. It's it's not that good a story. I don't care if Steven Schwartz made a musical of it. We're sick of it. Um, on that note, this is our last podcast of 2022. Um, do we have any New Year's resolutions for next year, Andrew? Um, next year, I want to become uh, the coolest person in the world. In my book, you've already gotten there. Oh. It's gonna what be if really I want to be then. the coolest person in the world? Oh, fuck. Uh, well, then there's not room for both of us. <laughs> you have to kill the other. <laughs> yep. Um, what about you, Brie? Is that yours to be the coolest person in the world? <laughs> No, um, I'm gonna. What am I gonna do this year? I'm gonna travel this year. I already booked flights to Greece. Ooh, take pictures. Um, reenact Mamma Mia if you can. That's the whole plan. <laughs> uh, and my goal is to make our fans happier and make great content the way that we have every other year, and do better, learn more, and have fun. I hope year 2023 has brighter outcomes and I can't wait to see what we do with you. Um, and maybe one day I'll be a real boy. On that note, we'll see you in 2023 and we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese. Bye! <laughs>